Hello everyone, I'm the Baron, and today we're going to be doing some stuffed eggs. It's a derivative of the modern deviled eggs, but stuffed eggs is actually period. And it's very close to the same thing, except of course we uh, use mayonnaise a lot of the time, and it was not really used back then. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process. I'm going to show you the spices that I'm going to use and the process. Now, usually you go and you uh, hard boil the eggs, take a little part, then mix them and everything. Because of the way that time is and I'm not editing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I cook eggs or boil eggs, excuse me. And while they're being boiled, I'm going to show you how or the mixture that I'm going to use. Uh, for the middle uh, stuff. So what we're going to do is take a pan, now I just had these in the refrigerator. Usually what I like to do is take my eggs out of the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes, well, around 30 minutes, and just let them get more closer to room temperature. You're still going to have uh, the inside's gonna be a lot colder than the outside. But the whole point on this is to ensure that uh, you get a better uh, outside so you can uh, peel off the eggshell. Now, oh, wrong ones. Now, the best way to do it from my experience is to take your eggs, put them into an empty pan, put cold water into it, heat up your stove, And then fill it up with water. Put on the stove. Make sure the water is about half an inch above the eggs. Okay. Now the other thing you need to have is going to be a lid. So what you want to do is this: you want to let the water come to a rolling rolling boil. Then to put on high. Then cover it. Then put it on medium high and let them cook to get a nice hard boiled egg for smaller eggs eight to ten minutes i usually try and go max would be 10. if you get the large eggs you go 10 to 12 so essentially 12 minutes okay now what you want to do at that point is after the i got uh, regular eggs i'll go 10 minutes after 10 minutes, you take it off the stove, uncover it, and let it sit for two minutes. Okay. From there, you add cold water into it to stop the cooking, and you go and you repeat. Let the water just drain out of it. You let it get down to a nice temperature, and then let it wait for another two to five minutes. So this can be a very long process. Unfortunately, I have just a regular stove in a hotel room, which is not the hottest and fastest burning stuff. So that's why this might take a little bit of time. But I want to get to the very end to show you that you can make really good eggs and shell them pretty quickly without doing a lot of damage. I'm going to give you an example. Okay, I did these eggs about two hours ago. So, and those will be the ones that I'm going to be cooking with and uh, mixing the spices with. Once you get everything cool, you let it sit for a few more minutes, then I always crack them in the water and then start peeling them in the water and taking them out. Okay, what you wanna do at that point is if you let them sit too long, they might start adhering to the membrane that's on the inside. 
you want to make it so that at, uh, once it starts to shrink from the heat being gone, that's when you have a nice separation from the membrane, but it's not going to get cold enough that now it adheres to the membrane. So that's the best way that I have found to boil it. Okay, so like I said, it's going to take a while. So in the meantime, what I like to do is I like to start with mixing my spices first. Now, I'm going to use saffron. Okay, I think saffron works really well, but if you put it in some other dishes, you might not get the uh, nice little aromatic flavor or the aroma if it's in a big dish with other stuff. But some for this, which is a stuffed egg, you're going to be able to taste it a lot more. So I will start. Good amount of saffron. Now, the other spices that you can add, of course, is going to be some salt. You can use some pepper. Now, you can also use some ground mustard or regular mustard to go and get a nice little, uh, both an aromatic and a little uh, tang to it. Now, this is the stuff that's going to be mixed in with the egg yolk, okay? There's really two types of spices. There is the stuff that you add to the egg yolk, and there's the ones that you add after you are done preparing your stuffed egg. Okay. At that point, that's when I would say, okay, I taste it. Oh, you know what? I need a little bit more salt, or I'm going to add a little bit of paprika on it to spice it up a little bit. But at that point, you're now getting a nice uh, aromatic, nice, slightly flavor, not a harsh flavor. But at that point, anyone else can now add the spices to their palate. Okay, so got that right there. So got the saffron in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back of a spoon and just nicely crush it, nice and gently. If you start crushing it too much, it is very kind of rigid and it can fly out. So you be nice and gentle, or you're gonna lose some of your saffron, and it's expensive. And since we're waiting for water to boil, we got plenty of time. And as I always say, pertaining to anything you do, cooking, Fighting, making your own clothes, doing your own dancing. You're doing this for yourself. You are making what you enjoy to eat, to dance to, to dress as. Okay, so you're showing everyone who you are. And you get this going, and it's like people are like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Then they're like, yep, that's mine. And you get a lot of very proud people. And instead of just like, well, I'm trying to make everyone happy, you're going to make no one happy. So make yourself happy. Now, of course, if you had like a mortar and pestle, which is if you're a really good cook or really, really into cooking, you pretty much would have your own mortar and pestle to grind up your fresh spices ingredients and everything. I don't, but I know that this works quite well. Also has a little edge on it, so if you need to kind of break it up a little bit, just turn it to the side and then continue to crush. Now remember, you want to try and crush this up as fine as possible because you want to get as much of the flavor into all the pieces. Also, you can, if you want to, 
add a little bit as a garnish or a decoration on top. And like I said, it's pretty expensive to so do that. Well, more power to you, but it's not, it's not going to be as flavorful if it's not crushed. You only get to start getting a lot of the flavor when you start eating it and grinding it in your teeth. So, Okay, it's just starting to bubble. I'll put the pan on. Now, remember when I said, as soon as it starts to bubble, I will decrease uh, the heat a little bit and I will put the timer on for 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, I'll let it sit for two and then I will start cooling the eggs off over running cold water. Now, I mean, you can see it very well, but giving a nice fine powder. Now, remember, if you want to, what you can do is squeeze and move it back and forth, kind of like uh, you're spreading butter or something like that. That way, you can see if there's any more big chunks in there that you need to pulverize. All right, now from there, I'm going to add some salt. Like I said, for here, I like to add pretty much all of my seasonings together. First. I'm gonna use just a little bit of mustard. A quarter of a tablespoon or a quarter of a teaspoon, excuse me. Now, I personally like to use white pepper, I believe it has a much stronger aroma uh, for a lot of my dishes, but specifically for um, deviled eggs, I want to have. Uh, a little bit of color texture. So for that, I'll actually use black pepper. Now remember, you should always use as little as possible because you can always add more later at the end, like I said. So you don't want to overpower it because, well, this is really good. That's the only time I would say, if you like really overpowered eggs, that's great. Not everyone's going to like overpowered eggs. So if you do it, you're going to be taking a lot of them home and eating. But like I said, you also want to kind of want to show off your skills and abilities. Okay. Now, some people will also like to add maybe a little bit of garlic, uh, onion powder, or onion salt, anything like that. So it's really dependent upon your taste again. Again, some of the limitations are people might really like it, but they're like, oh, I'm not a big onion fan. Like I said, you have the onion powder at the end so they can add to it for their flavor. All right. It's now boiling. Take it, lower the temperature, put the timer for 10 minutes, and in 10 minutes we'll have that going. Now, from here, making 
three days. Now, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to take the egg yolks, I'm going to put them separately in here, and then I'm going to mash them up, and then I'm going to start uh, folding them together with the spices. Now you can do a lot of interesting presentation stuff. What you can do is, say for example, you want to have a really big one. Instead of cutting it lengthwise uh, like this, cut the top off at about 20% and then scoop out uh, the filling. And at that point, you can pour the stuff in the mixture inside and you can kind of go above it. So you create either a cap or a hat or whatever like that. And now you have a much bigger egg instead of just having it. I'll try to do that right here. The only other problem when that happens is, say for example, oh, I cut it right here and the yolk is way at the bottom. This kind of thing. So, Now, some other interesting aspects about this is the fact that usually you add more yolk than you have uh, eggs. You're like, well, how does that work if we're doing this? If you have, if you're using any other eggs and you're like, oh, I just need to use the egg whites and the yolks will be for something else, then you can uh, kind of fry them up and add them to it. It's not always the greatest way of doing it, but of course, most of us will go and say, hey, I've made uh, two dozen eggs, but unfortunately, four of them crumbled. So what you do is you just take the yolks out of those, add them in, and just you eat the rest of the eggs because either they fell apart, they don't look really good because of presentation reasons, different things like that. So. some of these on a plate. Now if you've got someone who is really good at decorating, what they can do is they can make some really cool pictures, maybe, now remember these are just chicken eggs. You can still use duck egg or they're bigger and stuff like that and you can go and say that person goes and makes a design of ducks on the egg. So there's a lot of talent and art involved besides just making it for the food that you're doing. Presentation is part of the art. All right, now that we got the egg yolks, now we just mash them up. Last thing you want is lumpy stuffing. Now at this point, you can add a little bit of oil, very little bit. Unfortunately, what happens is a lot of times if things start to get hot, the oil will start to separate, so now you're going to have like oil on top of your eggs. Some people don't mind it, some people do. So, now 
Now, some of the additional seasoning, seasonings you can have when you present this on the side, you can have a little bit of uh, chopped uh, cilantro, uh, onion salt, uh, a little bit of uh, garlic oil, any types of seasoning that other people might be going, hey, I really love this. Hey, I really like to put a garnish on top. So really small chopped up uh, chives, they can sprinkle on top. The one nice thing about this is the fresher the ingredients you have is good, but it's, it adds just a slight more flavor. And this is not really the main meal. It's like an appetizer or the first remove of a feast or anything like that where you're just getting a nice uh, taste for your palate, or this is the direction the feast is going. So it gives people a chance to start seeing what you're creating. Now remember, the interesting thing about this is that you can make it as, I want to say powdery. This is still pretty powdery. Or as pasty as you want. That's the best part about this. Is that once you start the process, you can always change it. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more oil. Or, you know what, I think I'm going to maybe add a little bit of lemon juice or something like that, where you want to progress the flavor and the texture as you wish. At this point, I'm gonna start adding spices in. Like I said, I do a little bit at a time, mix it all together. I don't want to have one gigantic clump where it's like, oh, well, this one doesn't have very much. And the next one you're like, whoa, there is all the spices. So adding it slowly at a time is a nice mixture. It's not going to clump. Where I, I mix my spices together, add it, and then I start adding, like I said, uh, more oil or anything like that. I want it as a creamy base instead of more of a flaky base. Sorry if I got really loud when I said, oh, didn't mean to. Now, when you want to do this just for your own, you can add other things to it. So, for example, you can add cheese on top of it. You can add cilantro, which is a lot more aromatic. And when you're at home, you can add mayonnaise to it to really make it pasty. Like I said, you can add oil to it to make it more pasty. It's done, that's good. Take the timer off. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the eggs off the stove, turn off the stove, and now I'm just gonna let them sit for another two minutes.
Okay, as you can see, it's starting, hopefully, start seeing that there's a little bit of a slight color change, uh, mainly because you can start seeing the, uh, the saffron red in it and the black pepper. No, I think the pepper is good. The interesting thing is the longer you wait, of course, the more the flavor is going to blend and uh, mellow out. When I first tasted, the first thing I, I tasted was the salt, then I tasted the saffron, and then at the end I tasted the pepper. So that's the way it goes. Now, here's another. Let's see if we're good. Now, once you get to this powder level, what you can do to kind of make it firmer, you can put it in the egg and just be the way it is. And I'm going to show you that. As you can see, it's just egg, almost looks like a powdery uh, yolk on the egg. All right, it's been two minutes. Pour cold running water over them. Make sure you always uh, test to see how hot the eggs still are, like touching the eggs, not the pot. Best way to do that is to pour the water out, touch the eggs. If the eggs are cold in the water and then they, they're still hot after you pour the water out, you need to keep on running water over the eggs. Very hot, still a little bit warm. All right, that's pretty good. I'll fill up with water, let it sit for a few minutes, and then we'll crack the eggs. All right, so we did that one. Now, what you can do is you can actually form uh, the yolk back into a ball. What you can do is essentially take a spoon and you start compressing it, okay? It's still going to look like many pieces put together, but at this point, you can start forming it. Some people are very good at doing this. 
Oh, no, really? But give it a old college try. And essentially, you can see that it's now almost like a solid plug. Put it in there, and you can squeeze it in really tight. Push it down. And now, oops, hopefully, sorry if the lighting is not very good. Let me see if I can turn this off and it gets better. Hmm, not really, but at least now you can put more in there, compact it. Now, the other thing you can do, of course, is add more oil. Not a lot, again, just enough. where it holds its shape even better. So as you can see, I put some more oil in and as I'm compressing it, it's becoming a much more paste-like aspect. And from there, if you want to, you can get really good. You can roll it up into like a little ball if you want and then stick it directly in there. Make sure you go and you have uh, like uh, oil on your fingers. So it'll kind of uh, not stick to your fingers. But that is everyone's personal preference. But now since it's thicker, it's much easier To load and shape again, so a little bit easier instead of just always taking soft and compressing it. Now it's much easier to compress and pour. Salt's really good. You always get a little hint of saffron just at the top of your palate. Pepper's not kicking in very much, but you still get the nice uh, mustard, which is really nice. I like mustard. All right, last part. It is going to be cracking up eggs. So, still cold water, which is good, all the heat's gone. I'm taking the eggs and I am hitting them inside the water-filled pot. And there you go. Freshly cooked, freshly peeled, no crazy broken aspects, nice firm, hard to obey. One more time, make sure it wasn't a fluke. I'm glad it wasn't a fluke. That would have made me look really bad right now.
And like I said, this is my way of hard boiling eggs. If your way is to put salt in the water when you boil it, then that's fine. Some people put a little bit of oil, that's fine. It's the way you want to do it, what makes you happy. So, as they say, you do you. I'll just repeat, once you start getting eggs, put the eggs directly into the pan, add cold water, put it on the stove, let it boil. As soon as it starts to boil, you make sure that it's still covered with a lid, put it to medium high heat, and for regular size eggs, 10 minutes, Larger eggs, 12 minutes. Let it cool for two minutes on the stove, off the heat. Then you start putting it in cold water until the eggs are not hot or even warm. Then you let it sit for a few more minutes, and then you peel them, crack them inside the water, and start peeling. And again, nicely cracked egg, no deformities. All right. Hope everyone had a good time. Uh, this actually took longer than I thought for just making stuffed eggs, but uh, I will try and have the recipe and links attached to this video. So everyone, please enjoy. Do something fun at home, prepare for a lunch, prepare for a feast, and as always, make it your own. Take care.